comprehension. Comprehension, as I've said before, is the key to success in language learning. It's not difficult to say something. It's not difficult to come up with a sentence, a limited meaning that you want to get across. But when you're speaking to a native speaker who has tens of thousands of words that they potentially could use, many different ways of expressing the same thought or responding to what you have said, if you haven't got good comprehension, you're not going to be in the conversation very long. You can struggle to get your own meaning across, but you have to have good comprehension. How do you get good comprehension? I think there are five concepts that I have felt in my own experience have been very useful to me. The first one is, we have to get rid of the old idea that we have to know 95% of the words in any given context in order to be able to benefit from that. Well, first of all, I've found that even 5% of the words, if, they are, if I don't know those words, it's frustrating to read. In fact, that's what got me going into Link because I had books in Spanish and German with on every page, you know, 10 words that I didn't know and I would look them up in a dictionary and I would forget them. So that's not that comfortable in fact, although you get a general sense of the meaning. However, nowadays with online dictionaries and with systems like Link, I personally find that 10 to 15% unknown words is like a sweet spot where I'm gaining more vocabulary because if you are hoping to improve your comprehension and improve your vocabulary, if you're only dealing with texts that have 5% new words, you will take forever to increase your vocabulary to a level where you can be comfortable in a wide variety of contexts. So first of all, with modern technology, push yourself a little bit, take advantage of online dictionaries, take advantage of systems like Link, and find your own sweet spot. Some people might, if the subject is very interesting, might even accept a 20% unknown words. I find that tougher, but 10 to 15% for me is quite comfortable. Second of all, traditionally, if you look at teachers' approaches to comprehension, reading comprehension, reading strategies, you'll see this, for example, Scarborough's Rope, which talks about the various aspects of comprehension. To me, it's an unnecessary complication of something that's pretty straightforward, but the gist of it is that we need prior knowledge or background knowledge as well as vocabulary. And this is true. Research has shown that front-loading vocabulary, in other words, trying to teach, say, a list of words that the reader or the listener is about to encounter is not as effective as having content that the reader or the listener is already familiar with, prior knowledge. So how do you ensure that the reader can encounter material that's familiar to them? I think one of the issues there is to let the learner, the language learner, choose content that they want to learn about. They have to like that content. Traditionally, teachers like to come up with all kinds of pre-reading strategies, asking questions and helping the learner, the reader infer or guess. And I think all of that is a complete waste of time. Rather, you can have the learner listen to something in a classroom that kind of primes the pump a little bit, or you can let the learner choose the content that they want to learn from in which case the learner will probably choose something that they're already familiar with. It's interesting reading some of these teachers' manuals about what to do. They point out, for example, that a person of Indian origin, say, will find content about something of Indian culture easier to understand if they're learning English. Uh, that's obviously true. But that being the case, why is it so often that foreign language teachers basically try to force something that is culturally very different but connected to the culture of the target language onto the learner at an early stage. All of these things you can deal with later on. The main thing is to get the learner engaged with the content and in that sense, familiar subjects, things they already have prior knowledge about is far preferable. Also, uh, in going through the sort of various Google searches, teachers, when they get into this sort of pre-reading, they end up trying to direct the reader, at least in high school classroom, wanting to make sure that the reader or the learner, even in sort of English as a second language class, draws the same inference, you know, the inference that aligns with the ideological persuasion of the teacher. There's a time and a place for everything. And if the teacher is more interested in promoting their ideology, whether it be left wing or right wing, rather than just letting the reader or the learner absorb the language and draw their own inference, even if that inference is wrong, it doesn't matter. That 
you know, interpretation of the text belongs to the reader or the learner. The target is to let the learner or the reader acquire words and acquire some familiarity with the language, some fluency in reading. So prior knowledge, yes, but obviously prior knowledge can only be acquired through a lot of reading. So the, the sort of bottom line here is do things that will enable or encourage the reader to read a lot. And that brings me to the third point, and that is we shouldn't be, again, giving the learner comprehension questions because we should be encouraging the reader to accept or the learner to accept the fact that they won't understand, that a lot of what they listen to or read in a language they're learning, they're not going to understand it. I, I sometimes call this get it wrong the first time. When I worked in the lumber business, we had this quality control program where they said, get it right the first time. Well, if you're manufacturing, get it right the first time. But if you're a language learner, get it wrong the first time. Keep going. You can always come back to it. You know, I also used once this sort of lawnmower analogy where if I'm mowing the lawn and I've let the lawn grow too long, I'm better off to, you know, raise the level of my knives so that I can go across the grass, you know, cutting some of it and then come back later on and take a second pass. Make it easier for yourself. Take a first pass, get a lot of stuff wrong, maybe go off and do something else, come back again, have a second pass and pick up a little bit more. We need to accept the fact that we can get it wrong, we cannot understand it, we don't have to answer comprehension questions which I find extremely annoying. It's enough that I have consumed a lot of words, consumed a lot of the language and all of that is helping my brain get used to the language. You also want to sort of come across these vocabulary items, words, expressions, phrases in different contexts. It's also been proven that more than the sort of frequency, the sort of repetition of the same items, which is sometimes the case of people who, who study lists, blocks, flashcards, whatever, what's more important is to encounter the same words in a variety of different contexts. And that way, it turns out the brain is able to better retain them. So several passes over the same content, be prepared not to understand, just keep consuming the language. However, and this is the fourth point, you want to make it easy on yourself. So it's, it is useful to try to narrow the range of sort of subject matter that you're dealing with. And I tend to do this if I follow a podcast, you know, on politics in say Arabic or on economics, or if I can narrow the range of subject matter that I'm dealing with, even if I'm dealing with different, like I'm interleaving in the sense that I'm dealing with different podcast episodes or different sources of content, but it's in a somewhat narrower range of subject matter. I'll have a higher probability of meeting the same vocabulary over and over again. I have then some familiarity with the subject. I have that prior knowledge. If I move away, for example, from a political podcast to say literature or something on an unrelated subject having to do with, you know, dating or something, then it's going to be much more difficult. So stay within the same sort of general range of content and that way you're going to achieve that goal of more familiar vocabulary and some sense of prior knowledge. And finally, a fifth point is use the power of listening. Because while reading, as I've said before, is a great way to increase your vocabulary, you can look words up in an online dictionary, you can review them, but the listening is how I get into the subject matter. Typically, I listen first. I'm curious now. I've got some sense of what it's about. I've got a lot of missing pieces Then I can go in and read and uh, look up words and get a better sense of what's there. But th the thing about listening is that listening goes faster in most cases, depending on where we are in the language. But certainly for a long time, the speed at which the narrator, native speaker is speaking is faster than the speed at which we can read in the language. And so that means we're getting a better, faster, sort of access to the content that we're trying to read. We have some momentum when we start to read. And very often, even if, if the narrator is speaking too slowly, in fact, it's a disadvantage. We start to lose track by the time we come to the end of the sentence of what he or she was saying at the beginning of the sentence. So don't listen to material too slowly. Try and force yourself to listen to material at normal speed. In fact, I sometimes crank up the speed at link in order to listen to it more quickly. I can cover the material more quickly and I find I get a, in some ways a better, almost like a bird's eye view of what I'm listening to by the mere fact that it's going faster. And in fact, I did mention in a previous video that 
there was this dyslexic person whose name now escapes me who developed the methodology of you know listening at two or three times normal speed in order to overcome his dyslexia so there is some advantage in forcing yourself to listen and to listen quickly and of course to listen a lot to build up your momentum and your comprehension skills for when you go into reading so in summary I've given you five strategies for improved comprehension both reading comprehension and listening comprehension this is the key this is the, the base for your progress in the language once you have good comprehension you can work on refining bits of grammar you can work on improving your output but the key is to get that good comprehension and one important element is for you to believe in yourself and for you to trust the process if you keep on doing these things if you keep on consuming the language you will achieve your goals so thank you for listening and I have spoken before on comprehension so you might want to check out these other videos that I did on the same subject bye for now